This is FNAF World, a relatively simple game that has you select 8 out of an astonishing 48 animatronics to aid you in battle throughout a bright and cheery land filled to the brim with monsters. Now, Five Nights at Freddy's is no stranger to throwing players into terrifying experiences. That's why the sudden change of pace that FNAF World portrayed garnered a lot of negative reception. Although many would consider FNAF World to be unfun or garbage, I found that there is a lot you can do with such a simple game. That's why today, I'll be trying my hand at what just might be FNAF World's hardest challenge. So, the rules go as follows. If any character perishes during battle, I must remove them from my party permanently. If I lose any characters, the challenge can't be completed, and I'm also unable to revive my party members under any circumstances. So as an individual not so well versed when it comes to FNAF World strategy, I knew this was going to be a problem. And as predicted, it definitely was. On my very first attempt, I was swiftly shown what I was getting myself into, as Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy were subsequently curb stomped one by one. And though I had a relatively detailed understanding of how I would go about things, I knew I needed to at the very least write some notes. So I spent the next 30 minutes jotting down spawn locations, item locations, points of interest, and I decided I would give it another go. Right out of the gate, things were looking great. I planned on farming money by collecting every coin chest nearby, then resetting them by speaking to a vendor and pressing done. Eventually, I made my first two purchases, a Neon Bee and a Nat, both of which would be crucial to my survival. And though I was feeling incredibly confident in my ability to crush this challenge, running into my first animatronic encounter changed my mind rather fast, as Balloon Boy two-shot Freddy, leaving me with one less party member. Avenging Frederick Fazington, I swiftly taught BB a lesson and reluctantly added him to my party. With the untimely death of such a kind-hearted individual, I knew I needed to win this to make Freddy proud, ensuring his demise wasn't in vain. Taking extra safety precautions, I saved up enough money and purchased a Neon Wasp, alongside a level 1 defense upgrade. These would prove incredibly effective, as shortly thereafter, I would encounter an animatronic with an ability imperative to our plan. As I mentioned earlier, I had notes pertaining to the whereabouts of specific animatronics, and by proxy, allowing me to assemble a dream team equipped with one-shot abilities by circling specific locations. The abilities I am referring to are, you guessed it, Unscrew and Escape Key, both of which have a very small chance to one-shot enemies and bosses. Phantom Chica, our next encounter, held this one-shot ability, and I needed to take her down fast, as she could easily decide to unscrew any of my party members on a whim, which would be an issue. Thankfully, Phantom Chica decided not to unscrew anyone, as she would instead two-shot Bonnie, which I have to admit was not very nice. Apparently, my army of bees also didn't find that too amusing, as they decided to take matters into their own hands and avenge Bonnie on my behalf. With two party members down, I decided to take my anger out to the open sea, where I would eventually receive a healing pearl that would aid me in battle. Before I set to depart in an incredible stroke of luck, I had a run-in with another crucial animatronic, in the form of Phantom Foxy, who also has Unscrew. Luckily, having zero casualties, I took Phantom Foxy home and added him to my party. We would then, in a fierce battle, fight Auto Chipper, who nearly took out Phantom Foxy, but we stood our ground. Shortly thereafter, I would bring home two animatronics, Phantom Balloon Boy and Phantom Mangle, whom I swiftly replaced Balloon Boy with as I never forgot the pain he caused. I would then spend the next half an hour farming Auto Chipper before entering Dusting Fields. Here I would encounter Withered Freddy and Withered Bonnie, both of which weren't an issue. Realizing I now had an animatronic with Unscrew 2, things were looking fantastic. To prep for the upcoming fight with Frosty the Snowman, I would purchase both a level 2 med pod and a mega med. Both proved incredibly effective as I narrowly avoided death throughout the entire fight. With the XP gained from farming and now having fought Bouncer, I felt incredibly prepared for the next area, Lily Gear Lake. While on my voyage, I would encounter a tough guy named Seagoon, who naively thought he could mess with us and get away with it. Unfortunately for him, I had luck on my side and promptly one-shot him using Unscrew. Things were looking great for the group, as seemingly nothing could stand in our way. Normally, this would be the moment I would inform you of how terrible the following events were, but I genuinely mean it when I say the power of Unscrew was the only thing keeping our team afloat. I would then forcefully recruit Withered Chica and narrowly avoid a situation that nearly cost me the game. 
If you didn't know, throughout the map alongside glitch and collisionless objects, there are specific locations that if you walk into it for long enough, you'll be teleported to an area above the normal plane, named ampersand asterisk underscore 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 TWRE. This area is home to some of the most difficult enemies you can face in the game, with enemies easily being able to one-shot you using devastating moves including Alarm, where 5 orbs will be sent directly to your team, dealing 9,999 damage each, and Fourth Wall, which deals 400 damage to all party members. As this would be a clear indicator to not do what I was about to do, against my better judgment I had planned to simply perform the teleport and then bolt in the direction of a nearby chip that automatically places a neon shield in front of your party that blocks 50% of incoming damage. This chip is also crucial to surviving the alarm move as it blocks it from hitting you completely. Luckily, Unscrew prevailed, and I managed to seamlessly make my way there and back. Due to the lack of resistance from the glitched enemies, I came up with the smart idea to do it again, this time grabbing the chip Block Unscrew, which obviously means I'm now untouchable, right? Deciding to find one final chip for now, I was en route to the location of Pizza Fury, which is just below Pinwheel Circus. Though I knew where the collisionless object was, I had no idea there was going to be an incredibly difficult boss fight trigger directly in front of it. Now, when I say I was not ready for this boss fight, I mean it. As for every attack Med Endo would throw out, nearly half of my health would disappear. For a while, things were going great. I managed to stand my ground and put out enough healing so that his attacks weren't as detrimental. But though my efforts were valiant, Mad Endo decided to casually deal 394 damage to my only healer. With Freddy, Bonnie, and now Toy Chica dead, I had to take this guy down before anyone else was lost. Mad Endo would finally be destroyed, Toy Chica would then be replaced by FNAF 1 Chica, and while farming experience, Nightmare Chica of all people would try her hand at us, and although her efforts were strong, we were simply stronger. Shortly thereafter, I would enter the mysterious mine in hopes of collecting more chips to add to the collection. Here I would fight Isor, who is a complete pushover due to my newfound block unscrew chip, I would then collect the chip Endless Speed and encounter Phantom Marionette, who is promptly annihilated using unscrew. Then reaching Black Tomb Yard through a glitch object and entering the deep metal mine, this is where we would encounter another important animatronic. After destroying Nightmare Freddy, Nightmare Foxy decided he wanted a piece of me and was shown the true power of my team. Nightmare Foxy was a massive find, as there are only two characters in the game that hold the ability Unscrew 2, which has a slightly higher chance than Unscrew 1 to one-shot enemies. Already having withered Bonnie, Nightmare Foxy was the final remaining animatronic, and now his power was ours. Wanting a rematch, Mad Endo thought catching us off guard in the mines would surely get us good, except this time I was ready. Unleashing back-to-back -back unscrews, eventually he became overwhelmed by our prowess and was expectedly one-shot. Now, my plan from here on out was to hopefully encounter Funtime Foxy, who has an amazing arsenal of abilities including Happy Jam 2, which significantly outperforms any healing ability I have currently. So, in order to encounter them, I needed the chip character find Mad Endo was guarding and to farm in the glitch area. Now, I will reiterate that being in the glitched area is incredibly dangerous, since although I'm immune to unscrew, escape key, and alarm, I am nowhere close to being safe from fourth wall, as all it would take to defeat me are two hits back to back with no healing and I am toast. Entering the glitch area, my first encounters would be marionette and plush trap nearly back to back. So far, I was breezing through these enemies. Though I could be destroyed at any minute, the speed at which I was successfully unscrewing them seemingly made their efforts useless. But you totally saw this coming, as after three failed unscrews, a giant neon rectangle was hurled in my direction, instantly taking out Chica. This meant not only do I lack another healing animatronic, but only having one healer left in my arsenal, I'm closer than ever to defeat. Over the course of the next hour, I would encounter Withered Foxy, Nightmare Bonnie, Endo-01, Springtrap, Golden Freddy, and Shadow Freddy. Then, something terrible happened. Luckily, she was the only casualty, as the combination of healing bots and this guy not using that move again were definitely responsible. The future looked grim for the team, not only being restricted to one final healer, but also losing a crucial part of the party. Hoping luck would be on our side, farming for another 30 minutes, we would encounter Endo Plush, Crying Child, JJ, and Phantom Freddy, but still, no Funtime Foxy. 
Of course, I could easily spend another two, three, or even four hours farming and leveling up to an unjustifiable degree. Against my better judgment, I decided to carry on. Making my way towards the lower pinwheel circus, I'd purchase an XFO, replacing one of my bees. Then, heading towards the mines, I then encountered the paper pals and continued on my way in order to purchase a boss drain upgrade. Whilst on my way to the upper pinwheel circus, I funnily enough ran into Phantom Chica once again after removing her from my party. For context, once I lost a character, I would then go into the files and change the have value to zero depending on which one I lost. Of course, I am no longer allowed to have her in my party, so I promptly changed her value once again, then continued on my way. Once at the pinwheel circus, I unlocked the ability to teleport there and on a whim, decided to collect Freddle Fury near Black Tomb Yard. Hoping to come up with some sort of idea on how I could salvage this, I moved around my animatronic lineup and went to fight Browboy. This boss fight was way easier than I expected. Sure, things were bad, but he went down rather quickly, so that has to mean something, right? Heading into Pinwheel Funhouse with the spirits of our fallen party members behind me, I fought the next boss in our way, Bubba. Though I knew he could easily spell Demise for our team, my plan of spamming Endo's armor and power buff abilities made it slightly harder for Bubba to take us down. This team right here was our ticket to winning, except just as things looked to be going amazing, the severe lack of leveling Endo 01 had gone through, caught up with us, and Endo 01 would perish by Bubba's hand. This was, without a doubt, the worst possible outcome. Just as we found the dream animatronic combination, the plan was shaken up violently. So, reluctantly swapping Indo-01 for a significantly weaker character with similar abilities, Crying Child, we continued to what would be our second to last major roadblock, Pork Patch. If you were unaware, Pork Patch is the key holder. He currently stands between us and the final boss, Security. If we beat Pork Patch, we would need to press a few buttons, opening the path to Security and all that would be left is to hopefully land a single unscrew finishing the game, thus beating the challenge. Though, Pork Patch, in an incredibly unfortunate turn of events, had attacks that dealt a slightly higher amount of damage than our team had in health. One by one, every character on my team would be instantly slaughtered, and it was completely the fault of my own. Pork Patch, within seconds of death, finished off our entire team. Looking back on it, there were several errors I had made when attempting this challenge, such as not purchasing an endo upgrade when I had the money, or even solely relying on unscrew when I could have easily taken him down using guaranteed attacks. And though this was the end of our run, I will someday make a return and beat this challenge once and for all, since I was so unbelievably close for the situation I was in. Thank you to our amazing channel members for supporting me each and every month. And thank you so much to Anita Cube and Fluffy Gooberzak for purchasing the Glono Consumer Membership Tier. 